So guys, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I wanna talk about how our aerobic activity, so running, affects our brain activity. And specifically, does it matter what level of intensity we work out at if we wanna get different brain benefits? I know, pretty, pretty nerdy subject, but I did come across an article in Psychology Today, and it's titled, Aerobic Intensity, How Exercise Affects Our Minds. And it refers to a study that was conducted in August of 2022, where researchers looked at participants' long-term health based on their fitness tracker details, and then they ran them through a bunch of tests. So that's what we're gonna be getting into. Oh, and this is the weekly running and training vlog, where the main purpose of this video is for you to tell me about your week of running. I wanna hear about your success, and I definitely want to hear about those setbacks. So let's get into it. So as well as you telling me about your week of running, I also want to hear about your experience with maybe your academic or just your brain working. And if you've noticed that your level of thinking is tied to any amount of physical activity, like do you feel more mentally sharp when you do a hard workout or do you get that mental acuity after going out for an easy run where your mind can just think about everything? Let me know. So just from an anecdotal perspective, I wasn't a very good student when I was in high school and I thought I was pretty active back then, but I know I didn't do any high intensity activity when I was a kid. I did a lot of low level activity activity, I was really into mountain biking, but I did get my heart rate up like I do now on a regular basis. Now perhaps you might say that Matt, it was just because you were a kid, but I just really wasn't interested in learning. Now let's move everything forward 20 years. 20 years later I had been working out for a little while. I'd been a runner for several years when I decided to go back to school and attend university. And while I was an adult and working full time and had a family, I went through my AA, my bachelor's and my master's. And although it wasn't easy, I was never overwhelmed with the amount of work that needed to go into it. And I found I enjoyed learning a a lot more. I was able to grasp concepts a lot easier than I remember being able to as a kid. Now, I know that is not based on science. In fact, I only came to this conclusion after I read this article. So there are a lot of confounding variables and my experience may not be yours, but I found it interesting to think about. Also, you have probably heard of other research that has shown that physical activity does increase mental processes. In fact, I'm sure I have mentioned it on a previous video, but it's usually in the short term. So for example, someone will ride on an exercise bike for 30 minutes and then get off and do a memory task. Or they have a control group where someone sits on the couch and watch telly, and then they get off to do the same memory task. And more often than not, it will be found that the person that did the physical activity before the memory task did better on the memory task. So fast forward to this study that we're talking about today. The researchers got data from 113 participants. 77 were female, 35 were male, one didn't provide an answer. I also want to know that 67 out of the 113 had a bachelor's degree or higher. So just keep this in mind. And I guess we're going to keep it in mind because I just want you to know that this does not prove causation. What we're going to talk about does not show that one thing causes another, but it's still interesting. So in this case, the researchers got the health data from the 113 participants over the year immediately preceding starting this battery of tests. And that health data included heart rate, sleep, activity data, their weight, and their nutrition. So we got a lot of data about all these people. And the participants were put through four different kinds of tests. We had free recall with words. So words would come up on the screen and then the participants would have to recall those words. This was done immediately and then there was a delayed response. So they had to wait a few minutes and then recall the words. There was a naturalistic recall where the participants watched a two and a half minute video and then they had to recall the story that they were watching. There was also foreign language flashcards, which quite clearly, if you don't recognize the language, it's gonna be a little more difficult to remember what you were looking at because you can't tie those words to anything else in your memory. And for this, the researchers use Gaelic because Gaelic is not widely spoken, certainly not like Spanish or French or English. And finally, the participants did a spatial learning test. And for this test, it was on the video screen and shapes were placed on the screen with a a certain orientation, then some time passed and the shapes were put back on the screen in a different place in a different orientation and the participants had to drag them to where they were in the beginning. You know, I'm just realizing how obvious this video is because I probably would not have talked about this subject if it was found that running or physical activity decreased mental acuity. That's probably something I'd wanna sweep under the rug, or is it? Because the results were not all as you would expect. So obviously some of these tasks are going to be a little easier than others. As far as the naturalistic recall test goes, there have been plenty of studies that have shown that recalling a story of something is a lot easier to remember than just one individual fact because you get to tie it into the story and that triggers memory. Now I'm not gonna go into all the results data. It's pretty long and detailed, but the study is open access. So I will provide a link to it in the show notes below and you can go and check it out if you like. But let's just get into a couple of the results. So I think this first one is probably to be expected, but it was found that sedentary cardiovascular behavior was negatively correlated to performance on the spatial learning test. That's the one where you had to move the shapes around the screen to the position that they were first shown and high intensity cardiovascular behavior was positively correlated with those results. So for the participants that worked out harder, they did better on that spatial learning. Oh, it should also be noticed that the participants had to self-report their mental health and their stress levels prior to participating in these tests. And it was found that participants with higher stress levels were negatively correlated with delayed memory 
memory test. So people that had high stress levels had a hard time remembering what they saw a little bit later on. But get this, participants that were medicated for anxiety or depression, they reliably tested slightly better for the immediate memory test and the foreign language flashcards memory test. So I'm not going to interpret those results, but take it for what it is. It was also found that participants who did a lot more low intensity activity tended to be less anxious and less depressed. Whereas participants that did a lot more higher end activity, so they got their heart rate higher more than the other participants, tended to report higher levels of stress. So let's talk about some overarching findings. It was found that the participants that performed well on the immediate and delayed free recall memory test and the naturalistic recall memory test were more active than those participants who performed poorly. And it was found that the participants who did well on the immediate and the delayed foreign language flashcard test were actually less active than the participants who performed worse. And I know I'm often talking about how running can reduce stress, but the results showed that the individuals with higher stress levels were actually more active than the participants who had lower stress levels. Now I'm not telling you to go out and do something stressful, but what this reminds me of is when I don't have a lot of time and I still need to get my run in. So let's say I'm starting work and I wake up and I have to get my run in at a certain time, my stress level is going to be a lot higher, so I'm going to go out and I'm going to get it done. Whereas on the days when I have a lot of time, I'm more likely to drag my feet because my stress levels are much lower. Have you ever found that? Let's wrap this up. Light running is going to promote mind wandering and daydreaming. And this is the type of run that you're going to want to do if you want to go out and de-stress. So if you're stressed at the end of a long day, maybe getting out there for an easy run is going to be best for you. Moderate intensity activity facilitates problem solving and the ability to connect the dots between two seemingly unrelated ideas. Okay, and lastly, we have high intensity activity. And with higher intensity activity, you're going to get cognitive benefits such as verbal fluency, faster recall, and these benefits can last up to three hours after you've actually done the high intensity work. So perhaps if you're going to take a test or you're going to go for a job interview, go out, knock out some intervals, something where you really get that heart rate up and you are going to be performing at your best. Okay, so let me know what you think about this. I know this subject was a little dry, but at least I found it interesting. Let me know if you did too. I had a pretty good week of running last week. And if you follow me on Instagram or Strava, then you may have noticed that I wasn't at home. And I didn't film any long form content last week while I was away, but I did post some shorts here on YouTube and on Instagram. Instagram. Basically, it was just running shoe related stuff. But even though I was away, I did have a pretty good week of running. It started off on Monday with eight miles, very easy. Tuesday was my workout day. Tuesday, I was in Nassau and I managed to knock out 10.1 miles total, which started off with a two mile warm up. Then I did five one mile intervals with 400 meters recovery in between. And then I cooled down for two miles at the end. Wednesday was another easy day and knocked out 8.1 miles total, just running around the track on a ship. And then Thursday, Thursday, I was in Falmouth, Jamaica, and it was tempo day. And unfortunately, it was a very hot day, but I still took care of business. I went out and I knocked out 10.1 miles total. Again, two miles to warm up. Then I did six miles at tempo pace and then two miles to cool down. And then I had a nice eight miles recovery run on Friday. Pretty cruisy, keeping that heart rate low. And then on Saturday, I really took it easy. I only knocked out 5.1 miles, which is about 12 loops of the track on the ship that I was on. And then I wrapped up the week on Sunday with a day off, bringing my week's total to 55.03 miles, which is about 88.56 kilometers. So all in all, pretty good week. I'm pretty happy that the week went the way it did. This week, this following week is going to be a down week and you'll probably see why in a couple of days. I will provide links to the article and the study that we talked about in this week's video. And if you have made it to this point, first of all, thank you very much. Second of all, why don't you drop the Jamaican flag emoji in the comments to let me know that you stayed all the way to the end. Now my friends, that's it for now. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.